let's get on with some questions. So today we're going to be looking at the parallelogram of force and how we can tackle that. Let's move on to some examples then. So question one, two forces acting at 90 degrees to each other. One force is 47 newtons north. The other is acting to the right with a magnitude of 32 newtons. What is the resultant force? So don't worry if you really don't know what to do here because we're gonna go through the problem together. Now, the most important thing that you should always do in a physics qu question, first of all, is highlight the most important information or any information that includes numbers and in this case, directions. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight that the forces are acting at 90 degrees to each other because that's going to help when I draw my diagram. The next important thing that I'm reading is that the magnitude of the first force is 47 newtons and that is to the north. So now I know how to draw my first force. The other force I can see is acting to the right. So let's highlight that. And that magnitude is 32 newtons. So I'm gonna highlight that too. And the question is asking us, what is the resultant force? So let's go through this together. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a scale. So we need to draw a scale drawing. So our drawing needs to be a scale drawing and what does this mean so this means that I'm going to treat one centimeter as 10 newtons so that means if I have for the first one if I have 47 newtons must be 4.7 centimeters by my scale the way that I did that is to get 47 newtons I can see that 10 newtons is one centimeter so to get 47 newtons from 10, I just times 10 by 4.7. So 10 times 4.7, we can see gives us 47. Because I've times this side by 4.7, I also need to times this side by 4.7. So let's go again for the second force. So one centimeter equals 10 newtons. And for the next force, it's 32 newtons. So I know I'm gonna have 32 newtons on this side. And what did I do to 10 to get 32? Well, 10 times 3.2 is 32 or 3.2 times 10 is 32. So one, I'm gonna to have to times that side as well by 3.2, so I'm gonna get 3.2 centimeters. So using this scale that I just set, you can set the scale to anything, but you obviously want to make the question easy for yourself. So for this question, I just thought, well, it will be easy if I set one centimeter as 10 newtons. So I can see that I'm going to represent my 4.7 newtons as an arrow of length 4.7 centimeters. I'm going to represent my 32 newtons as an arrow of 3.2 centimeters. Let's do that then. So the first force is 47 newtons to the north. I just worked out that my arrow needs to be 4.7 centimetres long. Let's draw a line 4.7 centimetres long to the north. Make sure you've got a sharp pencil to do this. So you're going to draw 4.7 centimetres. That's a line of 4.7 centimetres and I've drawn it to the north. So that is my north direction. Now my second one was 32 newtons and that's going to the right. So in this diagram, the right is that way. So I'm going to draw my 3.2 centimetres to represent 32 newtons to the right, making sure this is a right angle as well, because it says acting at 90 degrees to each other. So that means a right angle. So I'm going to label these now as a right angle. This is my 47 newtons to the north, and this is my 32 newtons to the right. The way that we solve this problem is by using a parallelogram. A parallelogram just means parallel lines, and it's a shape. The way that we do this is, let's first of all do this one. To draw a parallel line of this, we need to connect the end of the 3.2 centimeter line, and it needs to be exactly the same length as the 47, so 4.7. And then this parallel line, this line here, needs to have a parallel line up here, and that's going to be 3.7 two as well. Great. Now we've finished our shape and this is a parallelogram. Let's go over what we've done so far. We've highlighted the important information in the question. 
Then we set ourselves an easy scale to work with. So we said one centimetre in this diagram equals 10 newtons. Then we worked out how many centimetres our forces in the question are. So we scaled our forces. Then we drew our arrows to represent the force vectors. 4.7 centimetres to the north to represent our 47 newtons. And we had 3.2 centimetres to the right to represent our 32 newtons. Then to figure out this question, we have to construct a parallelogram. That's just the parallel lines to the ones that we've already got. We drew a parallel line to the 4.7 centimetres here, and we drew a parallel line to the 3.2 centimetres here. To get our resultant force then, using a pencil and ruler, but I'm just going to use um, a different coloured pen to make it clear, you just draw an arrow from where the two forces join here, where they both start, to the edge of the parallelogram corner up here, where you drew the new lines. And this line is our new force vector, and that is our resultant force. To get the size of this force, all we need to do is measure with our ruler the length of this arrow. It's roughly 5.7 centimetres, and I said one centimetre was 10 newtons, so I just have to times this by 10 and that's going to equal 57 newtons for our resultant force and to get the angle of this because remember we have to have a direction we measure this angle here we're going to get our protractor and measure the angle go with 55 degrees so you have to specify where you've measured it from so we've measured this one and that's from the horizontal sorry that should be from the horizontal okay great so that's our resultant force our resultant force has a magnitude and that's 57 newtons and the angle is 55 degrees from the horizontal that we've measured there now a slightly different question question two three forces are acting on an object a force of 400 newtons to the north a force of 600 newtons to the east, and the third force is 100 newtons to the south. So remember, the most important thing to do first is highlight the important things in the question. So the first one is that we've got three forces. The first one is 400 newtons to the north, the second one is 600 newtons to the east, and the third one is 100 newtons to the south. Now it's important to define a scale. So for ease, I'm gonna say 100 newtons is just one centimeter, because that's a nice and easy scale. So therefore, well, our third force, 100 newtons, is just gonna be one centimeter. Our first force, 400 newtons, is gonna be four centimeters, and 600 newtons is going to be six centimeters. Excellent. So we can represent these three forces as a resultant force. So we need to draw a diagram. Okay, I ran out of room, so I've crossed that one out and we're just gonna draw it over here instead. So we've got 400 newtons acting to the north. So let's draw that out as four centimeters. And that is our 400 newtons. Then we've got 600 newtons going to the east. So that needs to be six centimeters represent our 600 newtons to the east. Our third force is 100 newtons to the south and that's just one centimeter. Okay, so this looks a little bit tricky initially, but we can use a clever trick here. Because these forces to the north and to the south, they're acting in opposite directions. So to work out the resultant force vertically, all we need to do, well, that's just going to be the 400 newtons to the north minus the 100 newton to the south. And that's going to give us 300 newtons left over acting towards the north. So I'm resolving this. I'm just going to use resolving with an R. I'm going to write an arrow upwards because I'm resolving it upwards. So the amount of force that I've got going upwards is 400 newtons minus the forces going downwards and that's 100 newtons. That's minus 100 newtons. That gives me an overall force of 300 newtons upwards. We can now represent those two arrows with just one arrow as 300 newtons to the north. Let's do that. We're going to draw our diagram again. So 300 newtons is three centimetres. So that is my 300 newtons. Now 600 newtons 
that's six centimeters still. And then to finish this off, remembering we just need to complete the parallelogram, six and 300 newtons, so three centimeters. Just finishing off here. And our resultant force is the connection from where both the forces starts, that's here, to the other corner of our parallelogram. Draw a line up here, and that's our resultant force. And if we want to know the size of that force, we just measure it roughly 6.5 centimetres. And then using our scale, that's going to be 650 newtons. And then the direction, we need to measure this angle here with our protractor. So if I measure that angle with my protractor, I'm going to get about 27, 27 degrees. And that should be angle from the horizontal, about 27 degrees. So there are two examples of ways that we can work out resultant force. And I hope that's all clear, but if it isn't, you're welcome to leave questions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.